Okay, good afternoon, guys. My name is Steve Ruffley. Welcome to another live trading clinic. Focus today will be on the uh, the Bank of England rate decision. Obviously, again, as many of these uh, things are generally priced into the market, the decision uh, across most analysts is that we're going to have unchanged today. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, the amount of volatility we're seeing in the markets right now can mean anything can happen. So it's always worth looking and reading between the lines, really. They're not Just because we get a rate decision unchanged does not mean that the future of the interest rates are going to remain as planned. Again, Mark Carney's come out and set a fairly strong stance that he's going to keep uh, rates low, and he's going to tie that to um, to unemployment. Is this the best way to do it? I don't think so, personally. Again, it's a bit of Fed following. It's a bit of a, a delaying tactic. Uh, unemployment, we know, is going to remain you know, f- fairly poor for a long time. And also, you know, again, with interest rates low, he's trying to – both stimulate the economy and reassure the economy. The economy doesn't want to be reassured anymore, okay? If it was going to get really, really bad, it would have been bad by now, okay? We've gone through the worst part of the recession, okay? So we're not going to spring out of recession and suddenly go into a boom. So we know that, you know, times are going to be hard for the foreseeable future, you know, for the business uh, climate, for the unemployment climate. So what really Mark Khan has done is nothing. In fact, by not coming out and having a stronger stance, he's put that bit of, underlying fear back into the markets. It's not steadied the markets at all. So what's going to happen? Well, that's anyone's guess. We've seen quite a lot of market movement over the last few days to do with Syria. So Syria, when we thought that, you know, the U- UK wasn't going to be involved at all and, uh, you know, Obama was kind of, you know, just going to go in and do a George Bush style um, attack on Syria, the market sold off. But then as we started to play the game, we got the UN backing, Obama went to call the Senate and got a 710 uh, in favor vote. It seems that a legalized war is fine. So the market's rallied up. But a bit of a sell off this morning uh, due to some rumors and an actual um, bomb outside um, a Russian embassy in, uh, in, in Damascus. But again, as the analyst to the Arlington 2 pointed out, these explosions happen on a weekly basis. So it's nothing new. So the markets have rallied back. Um, so really, we're pretty much where we started trading this morning. So doesn't mean we can't make money out of that. There's been probably, you know, a 100 tick down move, you know, 100 tick retracement. So there's plenty of money to make. And I'll go through my charts as always and explain to you how you can make the money in that. Let's go through the uh, opening part of the risk warning quickly. Spread betting safety trading carry high risk or capital. Built in losses that exceed unit's deposit. It be suitable for everyone, so please ensure you play inside the risk involved. The information code is provided here in the no circumstances considered not for us to best. Nothing here in with shooting investment advice. Information provided is believed to be accurate, a date and used. Again, it's only content by Banana's personal opinion moderator, not in trade.com. Content is not going to shoot financial investment or tax advice. In trade.com, it's not going to any liability of the content content we're going to What we're going to go through, as always, we're going to do some live charting analysis. I'll show you about multiple time frame trading, the only way I know how to trade. Fundamentals, obviously, we've got that coming out of the Bank of England uh, in just over um, 25 minutes' time. Live uh, real money trades. Again, I've got my account open here. If I see a good opportunity, I will trade. And again, this is a live session, a live Q&A interactive session, guys. So you don't have to sit here and just listen to me. You know, again, say any of your comments back. If there's anything you that I say that you don't agree with or you have a different take on or you agree with me, just put it out in the chat window. You know, again, all your opinions are just as valid as mine. Again, I back mine up with education. I back it up with live trade. I back it up with being the chief market strategist of Intertrader, but well, they're just my opinions. Again, you know, I'm not sitting here pretending to be the world's best, you know, market analyst. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not, but I have my opinions and I trade based on them and I generally make money. So that's all I can do, really. Okay, so these sessions are meant for everybody, guys. So please, you know, we've got some regulars. Uh, I can see we've got, got Chris. Anything you'd like to add to the, um, to the conversation? Again, guys, so keep it flowing. Ask any questions, any charts you want to go through. You know, again, just type them on the chat window and go through it. And how did you get on with your uh, your trade the other day, Chris? I bet you'd wish you'd uh, you know stayed short after the market is aggressively sold off. But then it depends how long you hold it for. You know, the market could bounce back, and it seems to be we don't know where, where we are really. We look at the charts right now, and obviously we're going to trade some UK data today. So I've got the FTSE and the uh, and cable pound against the uh, the dollar up. So we can see really that you know the the pounds you know, strengthened. You know, not significantly, but we've really gone from the lows, you know, a good couple of hundred ticks, you know, back to one spot five, six, where the market really is just trading, you know, within the Bollinger Bands, just above the moving average. 
again, I always try and make my charts as, as transparent as I can. I mean, this is higher time frame trading in action. So looking at the pound versus the dollar on a daily chart, okay? So all these other lines are just based upon other time frames. We've got, you know, days, daily points of attraction, support and resistance, uh, down to five minutes. But it's just start to build up a picture of what we're trying to do. We've got the sentiment here, the RSI on the daily. It's something you should have on all your charts, okay? It's not something you should trade from on all your charts, but it gives you a good in- indication of what's going on. I mean, again, we can look in the FTSE here, okay, on the small five-minute charts, okay? So it's volatile. We don't really, you know, we don't really like to trade it up for five minutes, but, you know, we can do, we can do whatever we want. But we see as we hit the lows and the oversold territory here, okay, in this big red candle, when the market breaks, breaks below down to 22 spot eight on the RSI and we start to come back into positive territory, we know what, what's going to happen. We're going to get back to the 50% on the RSI, as happens in most, you know, charting, um, uh, you know, kind of kind of theories. So once we do that and the market starts to get into positive territory, it wants to get to the overbought, okay, 70 level. What does the market do? Well, the market, again, finds the bottom, doesn't break the bottom pole in Japan, moves up, gets to these blue lines, these aqua blue lines, now, these envelopes, I'll go through them in a little bit. But then we get to the moving average, a little bit of indecision on the moving average, and the market breaks at the top of the Bollinger Band. So that's 52 ticks, okay? 52 ticks you could have made off the five-minute RSI, okay? We're in oversold territory. The market sold off back on data this morning, well, kind of fundamental information, should I say, this morning, that there's a bomb in Damascus. Happens every week, no big deal. Market finds some value. All these sellers are out of the market. Indecision, bang, market goes up. Indecision, bang, market goes up. So really, you know, we're, we're kind of trading pretty much to where we opened. You know, we opened a little bit higher here, but we're not really kind of trading negatively down. We're not really trading positively up. We're kind of in a, in a good, nice mid-range. So again, all these things you have to look at when you're doing your um, doing your charting analysis. I mean, if you've got, if you've got your hourly charts here, you can see how that's behaving. We spike up again on the um, on the 70%. OK, the 70 over overbought territory and the RSI and the market comes down. But the market doesn't really follow it, does it? OK, we, we, we spike up, we spike back down, you know, in, in that fundamental news. But the market really bounced off the 50 RSI mark and it's going back up. So that's supporting the retracement of any down moves we've had. So really, when the market starts to break up here, which it probably will do and test these highs again, you know, you look for your other points of interest in the market where the market could go to. And that's these daily levels, two daily levels close together up here in the FTSE. So the market from here could quite easily go another 94 ticks and test that before coming back down. So, again, it's about understanding what we're, what we're trading, understanding what's happening in not just the big term, you know, the higher time frames, but the smaller, more manageable time frames like your hourly to your 15 minutes and try and build a, a trading decision based around that. And the RSR, you know, in any time frame is, is a good indicator of what to do okay so we're just seeing somebody what's my opinion on the pound versus the cap okay something i never trade let's have a look pound versus the canadian so standard metatrader chart just put some color on it okay so here we are let's start on the highest of time frames going to look fairly fairly messy Okay, with higher time frames, so we're really just trading in this lower range. So we've seen since, I guess, you know, these double treble tops really were made back in 2003. The market's really, you know, made lower highs and continued to go down. So a bit of a consolidation period now between uh, one spot 639 and one spot 5542. So the market's moving sideways. So the Bollinger Bands and the monthlies are pretty close together and have some time. So what we're looking at on the RSI, well, we're popping just above the 50%, trading at uh, 54 on the RSI. So that means the market, if it wants to break, could potentially break up to the uh, to the, the 70 overbought mark. So we don't really have any major uh, lines of higher time frame. So I'd expect if the market's going to break up, it's going to get to a uh, one spot six six nine two, and on the very high side, in the initial end of the month, it's one spot seven zero five six. It's looking like it wants to break higher. Okay, that's that's what the monthly chart is telling. Go to the weeklies. Again, we can see that big range in the market. Okay, we're hitting the highs, going back to the lows. We're going to do another charting method on this. You do a sideways um, trend channel. So just find the upper levels of resistance, lower levels of support, and sell high and buy low. 
So really, if the market rejects a high move here and all these tops and all these, you know, tops of these candles, these weekly candles, you'd expect the market, if it rejects that, it's going to easily come back down to the moving average and go another 400 ticks back to around about 15985. So, again, if the market is fundamentally in its trend, that could be another indication that we break the higher. The market's going to move aggressively higher. So look at the dailies. Well, again, we've already rejected a move up above the overbought on the RSI. That's what it looks like it could be heading south. So really in the dailies and the overall in the monthlies, I wouldn't see a fundamental strengthening of the pound versus the Canadian. So I'd expect more than anything is going to drift back down. So really my short-term targets would be one spot six two really and really one five nine eight five that we talked about. What we see in the envelopes is the, these aqua blue lines. Is they start to the, the, again I put the Bollinger bands in because they generally show okay the the upper and lower band of support because again there's two standard deviations based around the moving average. The envelopes are something I've not used uh, before, but really what they do is they show you when the market's kind of changing sentiment. So when you get this pattern, you know like the back of an envelope, that's why it's called. It, it's almost showing you the market's ready for a move up. So if you tie that in with under other indicators like your RSI and you know, maybe any other indicators that you may like to use, you can see when the trend is likely to kind of gain some momentum. So we see the lull, okay, where the envelope reaches its peak and then comes down, and then again we find support, okay, and as the RSI is moving above 50 to the overbought territory, the market then is supported by the moving average and the envelope, and we move higher. So, really, it's looking like the market's going to top up up here on the envelope. We've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven uh, good attempts to, to break higher above one, six, one, one, six, five, or nine. We haven't. So, for me, the market, the pound against the, um, the, the CAD is coming down. Okay, so 100, 170 ticks. I reckon it's going to get to right about one spot six, seven in the next week or so trading. That, that's what I'd expect and, and test these levels of support here. So, down. Down, down is my short-term bias for the pound against the cat. So, Basim, is that what you think? I mean, does that tie in with your um, your view of the market? Have you got any particular view yourself? Do you think it's going to come down? Do you reckon it's peaked on the highs? Again, just flick through to your hourly charts. Again, you can see really one, two, three, four attempts to break outside the upper Bollinger Band, rejected it, and that envelope kind of scenario on the hourly just looks like it's, it's going to move down, doesn't it? So, really, it's looking like it's going to move down. We've traded on the hourly outside of the upper Bollinger Band extremes. Okay? So, the, these are the Bollinger Band extremes and Fibonacci uh, extensions. So, the, the, these two are major levels of resistance. We broke through that. We couldn't make a high high based on it. So, really, these are the points the market's going to test first and then move down. Down after a break of support? Yeah, absolutely. But I agree with you. I mean, again, I'd be selling all these highs up here. And then again, a break of 16365 would show a short term hourly pivot break. And then you've got these big levels here at 16339. Uh, uh, and then all these green lines to buy back at, you know, based upon the previous match. So again, the market's coming down and the hourly is going to get to that 30, that oversold mark. So uh, yeah, in the short term, sell high. And, uh, and wait for the market to drift down. That would be my opinion. Yes, no problem. Anything else we'd like to look at, guys? You know, we've got you know, plenty of time before we talk about um, anything else in particular about you know, the Bank of England. So anything else you want to look at quickly? So we've got the Aussie dollar, US dollar, large retracement or trend regime. Well, I mean, the Aussie dollar is one of them, isn't it? I mean, again, it's been in the news for, for years. It's been in a massive bear trend. And then, again, people start to buy it. Uh, because you're going to find some value, and they've got smashed out to so continue to go down. But what's it dollar? So again, when we see on, so again, the market really, you know, again, it, it's been heavily kind of, you know, been selling off in the last few months after this tight range, this, this big rejection of one spot zero six one. Okay, so the weeklies really shows the market still, you know, has a big down retracement. If you're talking about Fibonacci, well, I mean, you've got the highs to the low here. So really what you're looking for is a market to get back to here. Okay, 0.9713 to 50% before it actually does anything. Okay, I mean, we've really found major okay, resistance here. The market could not break that several times and there's been nothing but sell off until that. So the market is due a, a, a bit of a, a buyback in the short term or the short to medium term. Again, we've 
bounced off the 30 level in the RSI, so we're heading towards the 50, okay? So the market really wants to test this 23.6. And again, what you'll have to do if you're looking for a longer-term trade is break this 23.6, and that has to act as support. If that acts as support, then we're going to hit the 38.2 and then the 50%. If the market then breaks above that, it's definitely, and holds above 50%, it's definitely going to test here eventually. If it rejects that, we're going to make new lows, okay? That's the way charts work. So we just swing that onto the onto the daily chart. We can see we've found this nice support resistance level, okay, between these fibs. So again, if the market is going to break in the short term, it's going to have to break these levels at 0 0.9, uh, 2, 3, 2, 2. And then again, it's going to drift up and you'd expect it to hit these other levels between the 50 and 38.2. So really, again, if the Aussie is going to strengthen against the dollar, it's going to really, for me, going to have to test around about 0 0.95795 before we really know what's going to happen. So short term, yeah, I think there is a bit of uh, upward side, which, you know, really we're talking, you know, a good 400 ticks. But if we start to find resistance here uh, on this 23.6, the market can't break above that. OK, the market is definitely going to come back down and make some new low. OK, so just again, draw a Fibonacci on, on, your, on your weekly chart from the high to the low and just keep that 50 percent line in mind. OK, but and then. You know, I'm going to trade that a little bit shorter term. You know, look at the hourlies. You know, again, I mean, on the hourlies, for me, I'd like to be selling. So the higher time frame, see, there is plenty more room on the upside. But for me, I could see it going down before it goes back up. So I'd really be selling a break here and letting the market drift back down to maybe 0 0.89974 before I'd start buying and, uh, you know, let it hit back up to these top end fibs at 23.6 you know, 38.2 and 50%. So, again, that's why, it's, you know, you have to kind of understand, you know, that the higher time frame overview, that really, you know, there is plenty of uproom, but it doesn't mean you can't benefit from a short-term sell-off in the market. And, again, if you want to let the market sell off in the short term and just buy back value longer term, that's fine. We want to get involved in the market when everyone's expecting it to go up longer term, it's selling off in the short term. We can also sell into that. Okay, so really, for me, the longer term is there's, there's plenty of buying opportunities. Um, in the shorter term, maybe today until non-farm payrolls, I'd probably be selling. But again, it's down to you to, uh, to build up your opinion from that. So the pound versus the Japanese yen. Like your strange crosses, don't you? Pound, Japanese yen. OK, so pound Japanese yen, again, we've seen a big sell off, uh, you know, from really April 2008 all the way down. We want to do a Fibonacci. You can from the highs to the lows. OK, so the market's found support down here. Again, what you expect to find is the 23.6 uh, has to become support or resistance. Again, if that was resistance, we'd go down, we'd make new lows. It's acted as support. So really quite clear. The market wants to test up here to 38.2 and get back to the 50 percent. OK, so that's a long term view in the monthlies going to the weeklies. You can see, look, 38, 23.6, no coincidence, acted as major support. Dailies, again, we've seen the market move sideways, but it's off that. So really, once we break these highs here, the market's got no real um, kind of short term. When I talk about short term, I mean the kind of daily, weekly, monthly level of interest until we hit this 23.6. So we can move a thousand ticks on the upside, okay, in the um, in the pound against the Japanese yen uh, before there's any kind of real selling action going to come into the market. So again, a break above the highs. Yeah, watch, be very, very careful, obviously, on the daily of, of being too overbought before you see a correction. But yeah, I could see that definitely the market could go another two, three hundred ticks quite easily upwards before the market finds any kind of... Uh, uh, resistance. So just flick onto the hourlies. So again, we can see gradually just draw a basic trend. Okay, you know the market, the market on the hourlies. You know is looking looking pretty bullish. You know again just moving moving up. So until we break a trend line like that, yeah, the market wants to hit higher. So for me, yeah, buy the pound against the Japanese yen for sure. Okay, guys, anything else? Anything else we'd like to to focus on? What do you think today about the Bank of England interest rates? Any, any thoughts? Obviously, you know, we're looking for the market to be unchanged. But the whole point of listening to, uh, to people, you know, and the comments that come out after these, um, the, the, you know, the, these interest rate announcements is, you know, trying to 
understand what Mario, uh, not Mario, uh, what Mark Carney is trying to say. Now, Mark Carney is fairly new to the job. Um, again, he's, he came out with what he thought was quite an aggressive stance to keep uh, in, in interest rates linked to unemployment. But for me, really, that was just Fed following. That wasn't really any kind of anything great, anything unique within the market. And again, for me, it's a bit of a cop out. Really, you know, it's the ECB for me are a massive disappointment. Mario Draghi, I really dislike the guy. Okay, uh, not personally, I just I feel really let down by by you know what he what he brought to the table. So again, he seems to be last to the to the party every time to do anything with interest rates. Talk about negative deposit rates. He's done nothing but but bring stutters and jitters and fear into the market. OK, he's not actually come out and said anything concrete or conclusive, at least with the Fed. You know where they stand. OK, they're just going to say, basically, we're going to do anything, everything we want, including bomb Syria with or without the world's consent. So for me, I'm bullish everything in America because who's going to challenge them? Nobody. OK, so it's simple as that. I'll be buying anything dollar based against the euro. And that's my long term view. So right now, if we're going to focus on, on you know, the. The, the UK markets and based around what the UK, UK interest rates are going to do, they're, they're going to be on hold. OK, you know, my, they're certainly not going to have any un, um, unannounced changes to the interest rates right now. So we have to understand what that means to the wider picture for the FTSE. So the FTSE is happy to sell off. You know, we've seen these five minutes based on fundamentals. We're really kind of trading, you know, back to some sort of parity now. So. What we have to understand is what is this impact of, of an unchanged interest rate going to mean, you know, in, in the futures markets, in, in, in the FTSE and in, in, in cable for the coming kind of, you know, next few days and weeks. Obviously, we're going to see a bit of a reaction after the market, you know, comes out with data right now. But then it's going to go quiet. It's going to go quiet because the biggest figures tomorrow, the non-farm payroll. OK, so we've only seen this market, um, these market jitters and market volatility based upon what's happening in Syria. OK, if this was a normal trading day. It'd be fairly quiet and we certainly wouldn't be seeing these spikes uh, in volatility. So right now, we're going to wait for the interest rate announcement, see what Carney and, uh, you know, and, and, and the FOMC, no, uh, what the um, what, what the minutes are going to kind of hold in store for us. And again, we're trying to be almost like a detective with these. We're not going to get a clear cut um, piece of uh, commentary to say <coughs> to say what the market's going to do what the Bank of England is going to do, you know, in the next kind of coming days, weeks and months, you know, re regarding interest rates. So what we're going to have to do is really kind of decipher, you know, if what they have done so far is working or if it isn't working or if they're going to do something to tweak it. So of all the things to do with quantitative easing, you know, the, the bond buyback schemes, there'll be all the things to do with, you know, interest rates, keeping, you know, keeping them low, encouraging growth. But then, you know, they're going to have to say if it's working or not. And, you know, again, Interest rates have been kept, you know, historically low for, for quite some years now. And we haven't, you know, stimulated this growth. So it's clear that we can't artificially stimulate growth by keeping interest rates low. The only reason really we keep keeping interest rates low is so people can, you know, service the debt. £1.4 trillion of pers uh, pounds of personal debt in the UK. So if interest rates go up by half a percent, you know, people will be able to pay their mortgages, credit cards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is the only reason why we're keeping interest rates low. So it doesn't matter what Carney says, what the Fed say, what, you know, Draghi says at the, you know, the ECB. It doesn't matter. OK, it makes absolutely no difference what they do with interest rates. They're keeping them low so that people can afford to live. But all these things are cyclical. At some point, interest rates will have to rise. Doesn't matter how you look at that. Doesn't matter how powerful you are as a government or how tightly you control policy interest rates will have to rise. That is simple. So when it does, we're going to have to see what state the economy is in. So, as we say, you know, we're going to trade the UK data. So the pound really against the dollar has been a good bull move. OK, so we've got some good levels of where the market will find some sort of support and resistance up here. FTSE really has sold off on the back of, um, you know, the, the, these, the, you know, these bits of fundamental news about the uh, the embassy bombings, but really have, you know, spiked all the way back. So we're trading between the Bollinger Bands above the moving average. So really, we're going to have to see, you know, if the market takes this news well, we're going to hit 6545 in the FTSE, maybe above. The market takes it badly, we're going to start hitting back down to 6461, 6442, which is a big, big level. And if we break that, then the market definitely is going to hit 6364. So again, it's not really about what... Um, 
you know, what uh, the, the, you know, the market feels. It's, it's more about, you know, what they're going to feel uh, comes from the Bank of England minutes, you know, what, the, what they're really going to do, you know, moving forward. Yeah, OK, man, Joe, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Japan have kept the interest rates, uh, you know, low for two decades, but they control their own, you know, currency. You know, you can't trade. <laughs> the, the trouble with Japan is, you know, they're, they're not like, OK, they're not like normal uh, Western countries. OK, the way they do their um, in, in interest rates and the way they, they kind of balance their books is by holding their currency reserves against other foreign currencies. OK, so interest rates aren't really in the, an equation in, uh, in, 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 in Japan. That's not the way they, you know, they control their, you know, their, their country. That's not the way they, they run their policies. It's not interest rate bound. They do it by current uh, currency uh, dependencies, by having large amounts of other currencies you know, to, to trade off their own and balance the books. So it doesn't really matter what the interest rates are in Japan. It has no effect on, on what they do. So, no, they're not like the West. That's why they're not like the West. That's not why they're categorised with the West. They're completely different to the West. They are the East. So they have nothing to do with the Western market. They don't operate in the same way. They have, you know, like China, they've got their very, very long-term, you know, 50 year 100 years plans so interest rates have been ultra low for two decades because they have no relevance on the way japan run their 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 economy that's why they're low because no one has any interest in them literally so the fact that they've been low for two decades is irrelevant absolutely irrelevant you know they don't use interest rates to control monetary policy they use currency reserves that's why you know they don't have any kind of you know big interest rate an announcement or, or effect on the market. So, yes, they're absolutely completely different. Interest rates, you know, are used to control inflation in, in the UK, the you know, the Euro, Eurozone and the US. That's why interest rates are a big deal. That's why they're not a big deal in Japan, because they don't. But good, good observation, Manjo. Yeah, good, good question. Thanks for that. All right, guys, we've got a couple of minutes now before we should hear something out of the Bank of England. Any thoughts? Any thoughts on the FTSE? Any thoughts on cable? Any thoughts about people bullish the dollar? Are people bearish the dollar? Are there, is your fundamental view having any effect on what's happening? You know, what do you think about the what? You know, the, the the inevitable attacks on Syria? Do we agree with it? Do we think it's something we should get involved with? You know, I, I watched um, a, a program on, on 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 TV the other day, and it's like just like a news report, and half the kind of you know under twenties in wherever they were. You know, doing these polls in the north somewhere, didn't even know there was you know, imminent attacks on Syria. So the people care. Any thoughts, guys? You know, type them in. Okay, so couple couple of minutes now. You know, we're expecting unchanged on the uh, on headline interest rates. We're expecting unchanged for the quantitative easing uh, stimulus. So anything out of the ordinary from that will, will certainly have an effect on the markets. Okay, so John England's looking for one spot five eight on cable. Okay, well that's uh, one spot five eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one five nine nine one eight is a big weekly level for me. Okay, so I, I'd be expecting. Yeah, we do see a break up. Then really one five seven. We could easily blip up in the next few days over to one five nine. So just a minute now to the turn of the arrow. Yeah, absolutely, man, Joe. Yeah, I mean, again, the whole point is with, with the UK king is his castle that the majority of people's wealth is stored in the house. So you have people saying they're rich because they own a million pound house. You're only as rich as, you know, what, what that'll allow you to do. You know, a house is only worth what people will pay for. And, you know, you have to live somewhere. So if you want that million pound, you have to sell it and go and live somewhere else. So, uh yeah, I mean, the UK is a difficult place to judge at the minute. It's so property dependent, but that's why interest rates are keeping low. So people keep buying houses and keeping the price, the price inflated. OK, 30 seconds or so to Bank of England now, guys. So I'll just call it unchanged. Whatever the call is. Okay, unchanged. Okay, 
one second. Okay, well, the pounds against the dollars take a look. This is a little bit bid, but the FTSE is selling off slightly. So basically, unchanged across the board. Uh, they've got to reinvest, you know, some of the stimulus that, and then the profits they made from the bond buy in back issuance. So, yeah, the cash flows that they've made, they're going to reinvest in that. So that, that's good news for the FTSE. Okay, so the asset purchase facility that we've done, 1.9 billion is going to reinvest in the profits that we've made back into the economy. Okay, but the FTSE is really just still kind of, you know, lingering on these lows here. Hmm. Okay, sorry guys, I'm just listening to the squawk and what's been coming out. Basically, they're just saying that um, any stimulus and profits that are made by the bond back issuance really is going to be reinvested back into the economy. Um, it seems that you know they've uh, they're going to start selling some of the gilts they've uh, they, they bought back back in the, 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 the end of September. So again, that could see a, a shift in the bond prices, but nothing really kind of coming out from uh, from, from these minutes to be honest, really. But it's you know it's sending the foot to you know. You can see in the short term, we're really kind of hovering around uh, 6504, which is a bit of a sell level on the pivot based upon this previous uh, bullish hourly candle. So the market's really kind of drifting. But again, we see that on the short term, you know, the kind of the direction of the market really looks like it wants to taper up slightly. So I wouldn't be so keen selling into this. I'd let the market drift off and maybe buy some, some strength because there's nothing bad come out from the Bank of England today. There's been nothing really kind of, obviously, the kind of, you know, this holding interest rates low and, and securing the market and, you know, encouraging growth. We, we know that's not going to work. We know we, we've tried that a million times, but um, but it just doesn't really kind of, you know, it, it isn't working. So the longer term view has to be, you know, really, is the UK economy stronger than the European economy? You know, is it going to really bolster on the back of any kind of growth out of the US? So that's really what we're looking for. And the, these, these Bank of England minutes. So, yeah, short term RSI, you know, on the five minutes rejected the, the 70 overbought. So we're moving back down to parity, uh, parity. So maybe, you know, a bounce off the 50% of, on the hourly and a bounce off 50% on the five minute could see a good buying opportunity. So I'd let the markets drift off, but I won't be selling into it. I'd be looking for a, a, a buy back and a continuation of this, this up move in, in the, uh, in the proxy. So pounds going to go a little bit bid now against the uh, dollar. So again, uh, back to John England's um, uh, quote of one spot five eight. You know we can see the market start to test these levels of resistance and break up. Okay, Manjo. Yeah, I mean the whole point of the way I trade is I use higher time frame trading, so I can use a five minute chart to get the, the, the short term volatility, but I still want to know what's happening in an hour. Okay, so th this all this data here is just one of these candles. Okay, so it's all the same information. So take the highs, lows, points of interest from the monthly, weekly, daily chart and put them onto any time frame I use. So if you want a short term trade, then you look at the five minutes. If you want a long term trade, yeah, look at the hourlies, look at the dates. So you have to put everything in context, you know, to, as, as to what you're learning and what you what you know could potentially happen. So really, I don't see anything bad out of the um, out of the Bank of England minutes there. So any dips in the FTSE right now, I'd be looking to buy. Um, we're towards the top end of the hourly Bollinger Band, so naturally, you know, that means that we're going to have a bit of a battle between the sentiment of these envelopes continuing higher, you know, and a break of the Bollinger Band and these two highs here. So, no bad news doesn't necessarily mean good news, okay? You know, we've still got the problem with Syria. Something imminent is going to happen, but is that priced in now? You know, because we've got the UN on board, uh, the Senate have agreed it is, is war, because it's war, it's, it's deemed to be legal. Is that no good news? Does that mean we can start buying the stock markets again because we're going into a legal war? So really, it's building up your, your short-term fundamentals and short-term kind of trading and try and marry them off together. For me, I think the market's going to drift around. I expect the market is probably going to test some highs in the FTSE, but I don't see we're going to see any way we're going to hit these highs up here today. I think we're mainly going to range now between these highs and lows that have been made, and everyone's going to wait for the non-fan payroll tomorrow.
that's really what I think is going to happen. I don't think we're going to get a massive directional move uh, off, off the back of any Bank of England decision, certainly, or any back of um, any kind of fundamental data right now. Again, I mean, I think the US know that the non-farm payroll is coming out tomorrow, so cynically, I don't think any attacks on Syria will happen tomorrow. I would guess they'd probably start at the weekend when the markets are closed. That's just just the way it goes. Uh, again, very, very cynical, but... You know, the, 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 you know, the global advisors and, you know, the world markets are not stupid. So, yeah, OK, um, we're seeing that the pound is making highs uh, against the yen. So, yeah, okay, the, you know, the, the, the pound has taken some bid from that. You know, we've taken, you know, a bit, a bit of bit of strength that uh, really there's been nothing negative at the Bank of England minutes. And that's all you can say, really. It's not that we've had anything positive said. We've just not had anything negative said. We know interest rates are going to be kept low. We're gonna. We know we've made money from the uh, from buying back our own bonds, so we're gonna pump that back into the economy. So in the short term, that has to be good, doesn't it? That we're making money. You know, we're not losing money on our bond back issuance, and we're actually you know pumping that money back for the greater good of the UK economy. So everything from that Bank of England minutes in the short term points to good for Team UK. So again, any dips, as I said, in the in the uh, in the small in the short term of the FTSE, I'll be looking to buy. You know, again, because that envelope direction is pointing up, we're trading way above the moving average. And, you know, again, we've got some good levels at the top side to hit. So I'll be buying any dips right now. But, again, you know, dips are down to what you think a dip is. You know, a dip could be 10 ticks, 15 ticks, 20 ticks. You know, again, you don't want to keep buying all the way down if the market is selling off. So that, again, is down to you to decide to what, what you actually think you know, the market's going to do in the short term, and I'm selling to short term negativity or look for the, the short term negativity to be to, to bounce and to buy back the better big term picture. OK, so that, again, it's all, it's all about marrying these things up, guys. It's, it's not easy when I mean, it's a constant battle. You know, you can sell a you know, you can sell a downtrending market and still lose money. You know, trading is hard. But again, if you look at your charts in the right kind of way, again, let me just um, uh, I'll just put the DAX up out of interest because I'll show you how I kind of approach the charts and how I look at them. So this is the DAX, okay? We've got DAX daily, DAX hourly, DAX 15 minutes. Okay, so you look what's happening in the DAX. So the DAX and the hourlies, we've got a Fibonacci retracement here. So market overextended, hits resistance, hit resistance, then sold off. So I've got back to the 100%, back to the 161, okay? Uh, Fibonacci overextension. Couldn't then hold it. Again, we're above the moving average and the market buys back. So we've just hit the 50% retracement of this previous move. So I only ever do Fibonacci's on hourlies. But then again, I will use these levels you know, on the shorter term time frames in order to get a view of what the market might, might do. So again, you know, put your Bollinger Bands on. You know, look at the dailies. You know, we're trading below the moving average. Okay, So the market's bought up, but it can't really hold on to any of these buys. So the, the overall daily direction is still down. So, again, what would you do on the hourlies when we're trading towards the top end of the Bollinger Band on the hourlies? Yeah, if the overall daily view is down, you sell highs. Okay, you do the same on the 15-minute chart. Break out of the, you know, Bollinger Bands on the high side here. The market moves down. You know, you get an 82-tick move out of that. So, again, guys, there we go. That's really higher time frame trading. You know, using, you know, the charts to the best of your ability, you know, looking at what the overall daily, you know, trend is, look what the hourly trend is, and using a smaller time frame chart in order to trade. So, again, I mean, you can't deny how things like RSI work. RSI, overbought, 72, market peaks, sells back down. Okay? Again, we don't quite have the same momentum in the, uh, in the hourlies, but we get to 59, and the market rejects that, and we start to move down towards 50. So in that small move from here to here, that 10-point um, RSI move down, you know, you've made, you know, if you hold on to your trade from the high to the low, you know, that 80 ticks, you know, and you've come all, all the way down to the moving average. So it's about moving it, moving your time frames around, you know, using the time frames to understand what the highs, lows, and the peaks in the market, and looking for them all important, you know, changes in direction, which you get from, like, the envelope indicators, you know, again, you know, you get them from the, your upper and lower Bollinger Bands. You know, use them on a, a manageable time from the eight hour release. Then look at your 15 minutes, you know, for a bit more zoomed in action on what you could uh, you could actually do. Okay, guys, well, any, any final questions, any final thoughts? You know, nothing at the Bank of England today. Basically, business as usual. Uh, no change in the in the, the, the quantitative easing stance. No change in the, uh, the base rate of, the, um, of interest rates. But 
the good news, I guess, that has come out is everything that's been made from the Forwards guidance and uh, you know the, the, the bond back, uh, the buying of the bonds uh, is going to be pumped back into the economy. So, you know, again, that's that's billions of pounds, you know, made from the open markets is going to get pumped back into the economy. So, really, I can't see that anything else but but being good. Okay, the blue dotted lines inside the Bollinger Bands. Okay, what represents blue dotted lines inside Bollinger Bands? Okay, well, all all the dotted lines are areas of support and resistance. Okay, so this is a monthly area of support and resistance. Okay, this blue dotted line. The, the, these green and red lines are uh, the envelope, envelope indicator, which showed directional change. The RSI, that's just overbought. Uh, sorry, overbought, oversold, and neutral. Okay, so that's just the indicated dotted line from the RSI. So basically, you've got three sentiment indicators: RSI, Bollinger Bands, and envelopes. Then the rest are either Fibonacci from significant low to highs, or the dotted lines are monthly, weekly, and daily levels of interest. So it's just straight line levels of interest, three sentiment, and then it's down to you. You either buy or sell on these key levels. That's what it's trying to, to show you. Bollinger Bands are 20 period, two standard deviation. Uh, envelope is. is 14 periods, moving average, simple, applied to the close, deviation of 10%. To be honest, they're all standard MetaTrader settings, okay? I don't really deviate the standard settings on indicators because that's what the majority of people use. So the majority of people use standard settings on indicators, so so do I. Because this is what I know is, okay, well, the way I look at trading, so in the DAX, I know that people are looking at the RSI based upon that. I know they're doing that. I know people tra- you know, use these Bollinger Bands as the extremes of the market. I know because I taught them to use it. And I know the envelope is just a good, nice little you know, space-saving indicator to show a change in, in direction. So if I know all these things, all these dotted lines are my levels. So I know when the market gets to them, yeah, what other people are likely to do. And if they're wrong and the Bollinger Band breaks, I know where they can go to. So I can buy in when people are wrong. But if they're right and the market's going with them, I'll, I'll go with them. So the whole point is of having this set up as it is. If I use the indicators as standard setting, then I know what other people are looking at. So I can understand when they're right and understand when they're wrong. So that's all trading is. It's not knowing what everyone else doesn't. It's knowing what, what everyone else does know. And if the market, everything's screaming out the market should sell off due to these indicators and the market's going up, then I'm happy to buy it because I know that everybody using these indicators that are wrong are going to have to get out of their trades, that the market's going to overextend, and then you do the actual trade. Okay, so it's all about knowing what everybody else knows, and then trading with them when they're right, trading against them when they're wrong. That is how you, uh, you trade the market. So there's no point being too complicated and changing standard settings on the, uh, on the Bollinger Bands, the moving average, or the FIPS, because if you do, then you'll be looking at indicators only you look at. Okay, so the whole point is set your indicators to show you what everyone else knows and then use your own initiative and your own charting tools to get an edge on that. So you know what everyone else is doing, then you either do the same as them or you do the opposite. You know, you can buy as well as you can sell. If the market is expected to go up and it's doing nothing but tanking and going down, you know it's going to overextend because people long will be getting out of the trades. Okay, so in the short term, you can make money from people being wrong. That's how professional traders look at it. That's how people professionally trade the markets. And it's all about the short term. So you can't do that off the hourlies. You can do it more for the 15 minutes. So right now, I think that's good news for the UK. The market is selling off. So that's fine. I'll let the market sell off to these lower levels, and then I'll buy it back when the RSI gets below 30, or when we hit the low end of the Bollinger Band, or this low level of support down here. Simple as in the DAX. But again, if you want to, and you think people are you know, caught long, then sell into it. Sell into it knowing that every point of support is going to be tested and maybe broken and we'll get longs out the market. Okay? So there we go, guys. Bit of an insight. Nothing from the Bank of England today. Again, they don't always have the other volatility movement we expect or, you know, certainly wish for. That's just by the by. Okay? That's just part of trading. Um, Short term, I still think I'll be buying... um, you know, so some dips in the FTSE. I think that's fairly, you know, fairly average to, you know, to, to good news for the UK. Uh, the rest of the markets, again, like I said, we're going to see the markets do one final uh, buy 
buy or sell on the US Open, and then consolidation because all eyes will be focused on the uh, the non-fan payroll tomorrow. So on FX Street, I think I've I've gone for 170,000. I predicted the non-fan payroll on um, uh, tomorrow. So I haven't actually had an email um, through. So uh, I don't know if that report is up on FX Street yet. The uh, the fundamental um, view for. For, for, for the uh, for the non-pound payroll. But again, 170, that's what I punted for. A better than expected figure. So we could see the markets kind of close flat to lower and then, you know, certainly start to buy back in the morning uh, if the market does anticipate a stronger than expected non-pound payroll. All right, guys. Well, again, Bank of England, nothing really to report, uh, I'm afraid. Markets now, back to market action. All that uh, information has been, uh, has been assimilated in the market. So really, I'd be... Letting the market sell off a little bit for the short term. I've been waiting for the markets in the US to open, then I'd start buying them again. I think they're uh, we're certainly going to uh, bounce back a little bit higher before it's not bad. Okay, guys, well, anything else as always, just, just get me on Twitter, at Steve Roughly. Ask me any questions. Um, anything else you do see, guys, you know, you can always get hold of me, Google Steve Roughly. I'm not a difficult man to find. You know, again, look out for my different reports that I put out on FX Street. It's all under my Steve Roughly profile. Um, I did send one this morning, but again, that's been put put up either. But um, you know, I do give a lot of market commentary. I do, you know, again, set out my charts in an organised way. They can look messy to some people, but you know, really, did you know the, the you know the, the not you have to understand your own charts. That is the whole point, isn't it? You know, I understand my charts, so I know what they mean. You know, again, on the 15 minute chart, I've only got four lines. So when they get high, you sell them. What do they do? They go down. When they get down low, you buy them. They go up. You know, it's Trying to make your charts as easy as you can for you to decipher. But again, take a screen print, guys. You want to set them up for RSI. You know, you want to use the envelope, you know, to see a change in sentiment. Use them. Experiment with your indicators. They're all free. Okay, they're all free. All right. Well, listen, guys, um, anything else you want to know, like I said, at Steve Roughly is the best way to contact me. And I'll uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks to Maud, Vicky, and the guys at uh, FH Street. And I'll, uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.